Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Sonic Love. So in today's video we're going to be doing a unboxing of the Lockbox Pro from Chewy which has the Intel inside, Intel Celeron J4125. It has got pre-installed Windows on there but you can also use a Linux operating system if you wish to. So this is just the base model which you buy at a set price of you can get it anywhere between 150 to 200 pound or your region equivalent in wherever you live let's get on with it and let's do the unboxing <laughs> Okay guys, so just before we carry on and conduct the unboxing of the Chewy Lockbox Pro, I just want to show you the reasons why I got this. Now obviously GameCube is absolutely incredible, I love it, I love the games, but we've suffered so much over the last say two years of not having any decent type of handheld with the capability of running anything native of GameCube games. Now, obviously I do a lot of Windows based PC emulation. I've built an arcade. I do different projects. It's really, really nice. I seen a video on ETA Prime uh, doing the Chewy Lockbox and it was running GameCube. So that was about a year ago. So I was really, really excited. And I thought, right, well, this is my opportunity to finally get myself a decent operating system, decent chipset, and make sure that I can get every single game, hopefully, working with GameCube. So this is the reasons why I chose this little beauty here. But in the background, you'll see that one of my followers um, suggested to me when I did the community post that I should do a GameCube-themed arcade. I'm sure you've all seen the SNES arcade mini build that I did with the Raspberry Pi 4, which is just a little bit off to the right on the camera, as you can see. And also I did the arcade one-up mod of the Sonic the Hedgehog build using and putting in there the Raspberry Pi 400. Downstairs, I have been working hard on the Raspberry Pi 4 handheld and also a fully-fledged PC inside a arcade and that's where I get all the best performance of any system that I choose whether it be Wii, whether it be Switch uh, through the Yuzu, all those things but this is really exciting me so what I did is I did a mock-up test I've started it today so I did this when the gentleman told me to do a GameCube theme so it's going to be designed and built as a GameCube it will have the top lid uh, to extend so I can get inside, but it will have a eight inch screen on the side of the GameCube. It won't be a real GameCube. I will build it and spray paint it and shape it. I will take my time with this one because I'm really, really excited with this, but I hope that you will tune in. And if it's something that you want to follow on the channel, you like the video, please subscribe, consider becoming part of the Sonic Love emulation family. And for future projects like this, anything retro handheld gaming related stuff, then please, I would appreciate a follow and even smash that like button. Okay, so let's get right into the unboxing. So the package itself, pretty standard. It does tell us what we're gonna get. It is the Larkbox Pro. So let's slowly open this up. So we don't get a hard drive, we're Retro Corpse. Uh, literally, Russ from Retro uh, Game Corps literally just done a video on this. I swear, I did a video for the Adam and then he did a guide for Adam. And then I do a video and prep this for the lock box and then he does what a video on it literally the same day. I, I swear that guy's spying in my room somehow with his naval spy techniques. But obviously in the pack itself, we get this little groovy pack. And inside, we probably get a lot of as Wicked Gamer and Collector would say. Toilet paper, so there's a lot of toilet paper in there. Manual on how to set it up and what the operating system is. It does come with a clamp, and this clamp can obviously you can put it on the wall or literally put it on the back of a TV if you used to use it on your TV in your front room, bedroom, or any room you have a TV. It's 
move the box out the way so here we have it itself it is incredibly small now it is said on their website that it's the smallest 4k mini pc in the world but obviously since about a year ago they've had a lot more models come out and new ones but i wanted to check this out because for the price i think that it's worth it on the side we have an sd card slot and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the front we have a power button on the top we have the chewy logo on the back part of the io we have a power supply which is usb type c we have a full size hdmi cable and two 3.0 usb which is really nice underneath it gives you the specs and what it actually is using the intel celeron which is pretty pretty nice i believe that it is a small compact little gaming retro beast we'll let to see so on um the retro game corp channel he actually ordered the package you can get a package itself now it's the super console x but they haven't made this themselves they've probably bought this themselves they've actually just done a hard drive and give a few accessories on top of that and i think the price he said come in for around about 400 pounds which i think is a little bit steep but for what you get i will leave a link to his review of the hard drive and the performance levels that are on there i won't be using that i'll be using my own hard drives i have two so i'll be using up to 10 terabytes of storage from this groovy little box and i'll be running with the operating system of arcade punks so i'm hoping that it will be compatible if not i will have to go down the boss of route i will have to do it and set it up myself which may take a little bit longer let's just see and find out what we get with arcade punks and see whether that is another option to stand alone from Botticera. So the box itself is incredibly small, guys. I don't really think I have anything in comparison to show you. Ah, in fact, actually, here we have. So here's a Game Boy Micro. So if you know what that size is, then you'll see that it is incredibly small. It really is tiny. Okay, so I suppose your better example would be if I take the card out and then show you the size with the card. So it literally is just a little bit bigger than a Game Boy Advance game. So yeah, it is incredibly small, guys. But I really like it. It's really nice. Okay, so there was another box. So in this box, we have a power supply. It does come for an adapter, so you can use it in European and in some parts of the world. But in the UK, we are crazy and have a three pin plug, but there is an adapter that just slots on. Very nice, very reminiscent of uh, Apple product. But yeah, it's USB type C. So what I'll do guys, that is the unboxing. I think it's a great little package. Can't wait to get in there. In fact, hold on a second, there is something else. We have some little odds and sods, and I think this will be for the mounting or putting it on the side of the TV with the clamp that also comes with it. So that is the unboxing, and I will set it all up and come back and do some testing to see whether we can actually get arcade punks working on the Chewy Lark Box Pro. Okay, so the Chewy Box is plugged in and all set up to my arcade one up i'm using this because obviously the 4k screen so let's power it up and see what happens hi everyone
So it was detected straight away. Um, it's just saying just a moment. So it's probably setting up. It is installed with Windows, I do believe. Now, when I watched Russ's channel, his was Windows 11, newer version. Now, I do believe this comes with Windows 10, but I'm not too sure. So I'll have to select it through, go through all these options, and then I'll meet you back once it's done. Okay, guys, so everything's loaded up. I've put in a USB hub, so obviously I can have a little bit more I.O. I've hooked up a keyboard and also a mouse. Everything seems to have loaded up really fine. Uh, everything's working, as you can see, or can't see. But the mouse is, yeah, responsive. It loaded up quit, uh, pretty quick. And obviously it was a generic load up for Windows. So obviously if you get the AliExpress version, with the Super X hard drive, then it will automatically come with Windows 11. So just take that into consideration. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't messed around with any settings. I haven't messed around with any BIOS. I haven't messed around with any updates. <clears throat> I haven't even uploaded to the internet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug the hard drive straight in and see what happens. So it's detected it straight away. So that's a good sign. Okay, so what I'm gonna do guys is I'm going to try it out and hopefully it works. If not, I will cry my eyes out. CoinOps one. There is the moment of truth. Oh, so far so good when it pauses and disappears. We may just have a winner. It may take longer to load up on the lock box than what it does a true PC. But so far, so good. Okay. It does seem to be a little bit laggy, so I don't know whether that's because it's loaded up the first time and it might build up a bit of cash. But we'll see once we go into testing some games. Okay, so I have hooked up a controller, wired controller. It is an Xbox Xbox Series X controller. So it has picked it up. So as we go through the menus and the options, it does seem to be a tad laggy, as I say. So let's start off with something light. Let's go with some Game Boy. Go with some Wario Land. So there's some sound glitching going on. So this is with no updates and no nothing. So there may be some files that I need to download in order to make sure that it runs smoothly. So I'm gonna exit out of here. You need to go to emulators. So for instance, we need to, let's do Dolphin. And then we can test out a bit of GameCube, but this is what I'll do to set up. So what we need to do is open the emulator itself. So I have a list of all the games that are on there. So what we need to do is go to options, graphic settings, so we've got DirectX 11. 
OpenGL, DirectX 11. So let's just hit OpenGL. Let's go to Let's go with native. So it will build up a little bit of cash in order, because this is the first time that I've obviously played it. But you can see that it's running 20 million times better than what it was on there. So I will have to go through every single emulator, change out all the settings and make sure that it is able to run at full speed. As you've seen, even GameCube is running fine now but obviously it wasn't on such a lower system like Game Boy so I will have to go through those settings, change all the settings back from 4K right the way through to native resolution and maybe just test it a little bit higher just to get a bit more performance. So the beauty of Russ from his gaming channel is the fact that he already had the Chewy box already pre-configured and then a hard drive backing up with all the games that were already pre-configured. So I know that £400 seems a little bit steep, but he also mentioned in his video that it will take a while uh, to set up every single game, every single emulator, no matter what that you use. So that is true. So it's really difficult to imagine now just how long it's going to take me to actually do this process. So hopefully I'll be able to get it up and running, maybe two hours maybe worth of work. Uh, but as you can see now, it's all running fine. So let's start up the game and see how well it performs as we move forward. And that was just basic twe uh, tweaking, guys. But obviously I want to do a lot more to get it running the best it can possibly be. But just to see this running how it is now is so exciting. And I can't wait to build the project of building the GameCube with the screen inside. So then this becomes a portable unit, which is really exciting.
So it will take a while for the shader cache to build up, but yeah, it's running okay in my eyes. So yeah, I know how long it took to on a even you know more powerful PC before it actually started to smooth itself out and become a, a really nice experience. So to actually seeing it like this now without any shader cache build up, I think it's really promising. It definitely gives me more hope than what it did loading up Arcade Punk. So as I say, I will have to go through all the individual emulators, set it all up accordingly to the strength and power of this box, the Chewy box. But then as you can see from here now, just doing a little tiny bit of tinkering, it's made it a massive difference. So yeah, a little bit more. So I'd strongly suggest if this is something that you want to pick up to have for yourself, that. I don't think it's too bad if you don't have a background in knowing what emulators uh, to tinker with and know the set best optimal settings uh, for such a weak chipset as what we're using on here, then I strongly su suggest the £400 option from AliExpress because, as I say, it's been done for you. This is going to be tedious for some, but for me, it's something that I really enjoy is tinkering around with it. But yeah, as you can see, it's now starting to really work really well. We'll test it going back over the bridge one more time just to see if there is any slowdown in the sound or in the first section. But it's definitely playable guys. Plus, I think I can also drop the resolution a little bit more as well, which will also help with frame rates. So I was able to get Mario Kart 8 running. Not perfect, but I got, I got it running. It's under 30 frames a second. Okay, so I've not built any cash, but hopefully we should get some decent performance, as you can see from spinning around the view angle. It is pretty smooth. Again, any new action, it will buffer in, but it will settle down.
it's not too bad. This is going to be so good when I integrate it into the GameCube build. Love to know what you think of that, guys. Excuse me, sir. As you can see guys, it's not bad at all. Go on, little fella.
Come on. Oh, oh my Luigi. Home run, here we come. Again, it's just buffering, guys. Building up the cash. As you can see, it's running really nice. Get in. Okay, so there's one thing that I quickly just want to show you guys is a native YouTube 4K video, just to show you that it is possible to do some amazing streaming and also watch great media playback. Make sure it's 4K.
So another great reason why I wanted to do the Chewy box and also coincide it with the amazing arcade punks is just the fact that you can actually have on their PC ports and it's really, really cool. Lots of games all in one space and you can just have lots of awesome games like for instance, uh, Streets of Rage 4, one of my favorite beat em up games, but like en Enter the Gungeon, loads and loads of indie games that work just incredibly well also, which is pretty cool.
Commissioner, coming in loud and clear, Kurt. Yes, we hear you. There's a black market weapons deal going down in Kijuju. That's where Irving will be. The Alpha team has already infiltrated the area, and you will be going in as backup. Rendezvous with your contact at the butcher's shop. You can cheer up and get briefed on the mission there. Watch your backs. Roger that. Copy. Over and out. Remember, we're a team. Whatever happens, we stick together. Don't worry. I may not be as big as you, but I can still hold my own. Sorry guys, I have to add the sound down on this one. Copyright and all that jazz. So as you can see guys, there is so much you can do on the Lark box. It's really, really good. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you wish to see, whether you want to see some Stadia, uh, some xCloud, uh, maybe some uh, Xbox Game Pass.
even uh, yeah just let me know in the comments guys if there's anything you wish to see run in sega saturn then just let me know but for pc titles i'm gonna leave this one let's move on to something else So in conclusion, I think the Lockbox Pro, the Chewy Lockbox Pro is absolutely fantastic. I really can't wait to put it inside the portable GameCube. I'm really looking forward to that. It's great to see that now it's all up and running and I have GameCube working really, really, really well. So the next thing to do really is to carry on with the build. This is the build so far. It's looking really, really nice. It's hard three coats and sanding of prime so then tomorrow it will be its last sanding so as you can see it's all bubbly i've made sure that i've put filler in it the screen looks absolutely mint inside it looks really 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 cool i got a really nice finish this time which is really really good nice and clean Right the way around the filler is just to where the marks are where the wood joins so i'll sand it again down tomorrow and then obviously i'll do the final undercoat obviously this still needs to have a little bit i have to get rid of the glue inside but that's not a problem but yeah it's looking really nice so far guys so yeah, I'd love to know what you think um yeah if you want to see more and obviously i'll do another video because uh, obviously you guys will want to see the actual finished product. I will be spraying it purplish, bluish, the colour of a GameCube. This is what it's modelled off, so I'm trying to get as best as I can. Obviously, I'll paint the black circle on the top. I will cut out on the top part, so it will have a raised part. So it will it will have like a hatch. So once I have the hatch... It won't spring up like that, unfortunately. It'll just be lifted up. But I will see if I can get like an LED. So I can put an LED here so it glows up red as well. But yeah, I really, really like it so far. I think I've done a really good job this time around with the build. I did. I took on board a lot of you guys, obviously, advice with saying about priming it and like filling it and making sure that like obviously it's all done, the prep work's done. So yeah, as you can see, the actual finish itself on here is now really, 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 really smooth. And it looks really, really nice. So once it's all sanded down for the final time, and then I start putting on two to three coats of layer and then obviously lacquer over it, it should have a really, really, really nice finish. Can't wait to start doing the decals. Like obviously when I cut out the lid, it will have this type of indentation on it. Not too sure whether I'll just groove the circles around so it just imitates the buttons not too sure yet how i'm going to tackle that but yeah i'm going to have the vents in the side yeah so really really looking forward to it guys love to know what you think if you like this type of thing please consider subscribing hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any crazy videos that i do regarding my projects and as always guys take care